Hi, welcome back to my Alan Bradley PLC test bench. Today I'm going to do a little follow-up video on why it is important to test all of the COM ports at all of the speeds in a PLC5 processor. Now this could also apply to the 1756 DHRIO card because it has two ports and also to uh, Slick 500 remote I.O. adapters. There's all common, commonly built circuits. They're very stable but they can be damaged. And I find, found kind of a strange one today. I bought three processors the other day and just doing tests on all of them. Same way I did on the previous video, which you can uh, watch for reference on this one and how it's done. But uh, the one channel, channel 1B, which is normally the remote I.O. channel, which everybody uses it for, but it can be used for, like we said before, either remote I.O. or data highway. On this one, when you're using it at 57.6, configured as a data highway one, data highway channel, it doesn't communicate. But you, when you go to 115 or 230, it communicates properly. You swap cables around, do things, you can see it on the highway, but it won't allow uh, interprocessor communications as data highway. So that tells me that there's a possibility that the chip on there, which is a double EEPROM, is defective or has been damaged. Now, here's one here. This is a COM board, and the chip I'm talking about goes right in here. This, uh, this is just a spare board. It doesn't have the uh, chip in here. And this one you can take and program with a double EEPROM burner, which um, there are not many of them left out there. Uh, we do have one. So anyhow, um, I'm going to swing around here, just give you a quick uh, rundown on this processor of uh, what's going on. And uh, after I've done all the testing, I'm going to take a different COM board out of a different processor, put it in, and then we'll, I'll rerun the test and let you know what the uh, results are rather than doing a whole video on the retest. So we'll get uh, set up, move around here, and be back shortly. Okay, we're back. So, referencing the other video, it, this is all set up the same. Got the serial port here, which uh, we're not using right now, so I'll just unplug that. And each of these channels is tied to a 540 in exactly the same way. This is our main data highway cable. This is a channel down here that we're having the trouble with. Now, what we'll do is we'll just zoom in a little bit. And that's channel 1B. See, we've got this nice green light here. It says that it's seeing something on the highway. But if we go over to our test card here, our SIM card, uh, what's marked 016 and 0717, um, if I turn on the bottom switch, bottom two switches, these two light on the other processor, these two lights are supposed to come on. They don't. On this card, I turn on the bottom two lights, or bottom two switches, pardon me, and we go up and look at our other processor, way up there. You can see there's no lights on in that one. Now, if I take the next two, you can see each light on that simulator card comes on. And I go all the way back down. There's five, there's six, which is nothing happening, and seven. So, there's obviously something wrong with our communication. Now, if I take and as you can see on this cable, this one's got a resistor on it, 150 ohm. This one doesn't. This is a three foot piece of cable, it should, and every other processor I've test, tested has not had a problem. So if I take, unplug this, you can see how that green light stays on. That green light should go off because there's nothing connected to that data highway port. 
if I take, and this is just taking half a second here, and put a resistor across this one, at 150 ohm, plug it in, okay, there is no change, oh, pardon me, wrong there, if I take, let me just go up, you can see the bottom two lights here, flip on the other one, and you can see how they come on now, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be consistent, and it hasn't been in all my testing here today, and I've just spent a couple hours on this one, because it's so strange. But if I go to 115K or 230K on this channel 1B, there is no problem. So what it boils down to is there's something damaged on this comm card. Um, it's acting erratically and it needs to be changed out. So that's what's going to happen. Um, I've got a couple more in the back room. I'll pull one out, pull this apart, change it out. You have to disassemble this entire processor because of the series of it. Some of the older ones had a, a little door at the front where you could take out the one screw and it slide in and out. But these ones don't so i'll do all that do further testing and just add a little addendum to the end of this and let you know how it worked out back after a while thanks a lot okay we're back well obviously uh, as you can see this stuff sitting here um this is the com card it's a different style than i've got in stock this is a series d revision t is in tom so, with these COM cards, as the technology got to the plateau, which is about what, what this processor is from 2006, they um, were pretty specific on uh, which cards you could slide back in and out. So I've got to get, got to order up a card and a spare and get it in. And uh, so that could, with today's uh, current COVID situation, that could take a couple or three weeks. So. But anyhow, in the meantime, um, that's why you always check all four ports or all ports on a, on a COM card and at all available speeds to make sure that all of them work properly. Thanks a lot. Uh, come back anytime. Subscribe if you'd like. Have a great day and stay safe out there.